And y'all got on early. Hey, Bonnie. Hey, Linda. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Cheryl. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm all like, man, I was like, well, I'll go ahead and start the meeting early. Oh, well, everybody's here already. Hey, did you get my message with that video? I did. I have not watched it yet. I haven't really had time. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, I, I know what it is. I mean, oh. they're, they're doing it all over the place now. Oh. Actually. Fecal implants. Yes. It's very well. No, she doesn't even get into that until the end of it. Um, oh, okay. She talks totally about the lower intestine and all the microbes and everything going from the small intestine to the lower intestine. I'm going, oh my gosh, this is this is her thing. Oh yeah, well and she I mean, just briefly said about the fecal thing. Oh gotcha. Well, I mean, what they're finding is kids with autism and people who are obese, chronically. I mean, all kinds of things. If they get a, a fecal implant of a um, healthy person, I know this is gross. Sorry, y'all, but it's truth. They get a fecal implant of a healthy person, they can um, recover like fully. Like heavy people lose weight, autistic people become not autistic. <laughs> Lisa, I Bonnie, see you. you are you are muted, Bonnie. I can't hear you. <laughs> Lisa doesn't need to be heard. It was all visual. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I mean, fecal implant. Come on, yeah, dude. Hey, if it makes you healthy, who cares? I'm like, hey, give me the good microbes. Yeah, but you'll enjoy the um, all of what she's talking about. You'll understand what she's talking about. That she just said that towards the end, she mentioned it. Um, but you'll like the whole visual that she does. Okay, let me real quickly. Um, well, I'll wait until it's like 802. Hang on, y'all. Just gonna have to wait a minute. But um, y'all go ahead and. Everybody is muted as they come in, so that's a good thing. Um, but if you run your cursor over your mute or unmute, you can unmute yourself. Also at the bottom, um, there's a chat box. You are more than welcome to put some chats in there. Uh, hang on, I got somebody reaching out for the Zoom link. Just a minute. <laughs> I love it. All right. So as people come in, just to let you all know, you are all, hey, Tracy, I see you over there, girl. You are all um, muted, but we will, but you are more than welcome to unmute yourselves and ask questions as we go along. Please feel free. Is my lighting okay? Get some professional lighting, will you? Oh, well, you know, I'm doing my best, girl. Come on. <laughs> I'm not you. Hmm. Oh, please. Uh -huh. So anyhow, we'll um, let it go for at least a couple more minutes just to let people get on. I know I, you know, and then it is recording. So if I can figure out how to upload the recording to Facebook event, because um, I've had a little bit of difficulty with that the last couple of days. Technology is my friend. Technology is my friend. Ah. Um, I find it easy and fun. Um, then what I'll do is I'll post it in the Facebook group and y'all can just know that, you know, the first five minutes or three minutes are me rambling. Hey, Bonnie, Bonnie. Typically how it goes. I know kind of how we get started and I have notes and books that I'm going to be utilizing tonight because um, our brains are wonderful and truly can store a lot of information. However, <laughs> you know, oh, books are great too, and they got a lot of information in them, and I'm kind of, my, my goal is to empower you all to know where to find information and resources when things come up. I mean, we, 
I am a resource, obviously, all of us are resources, but my, my goal is to help you all feel empowered that when things come up, you can um, find some information on it. So one more person reaching out saying, hey, I need to post. I love the structure of having a class because as we discovered about an hour ago, Amy, I have these resources that you have used for this class and I haven't cracked them open and read a single page out of them. Oh, yes. so, <laughs> so resources are kind of like oils. I know this is going to come as a shocker, but they don't work well when they sit on the shelf, not being utilized or supplements I, I am, or whatever. I know being honest that is coming okay. from a place of love yes so, i know hey Lisa. i know all right okay. so let me see here um, all right i'm, oh, I'm not going to not watch my phone anymore <sighs> okay so i can't see them all right I'm gonna continue to mute people as we go. Lisa, if you'll make sure to, as you go along. All right. I don't know if I have the capacity to do that, but I will try. Perfect, no big deal. I mean, if you're making a lot of noise, I'm gonna call you out and be like, hey, um, can you stop <laughs> your dog barking in the background or whatever, but all right, so um, I, I had an idea at the beginning of this year that one of the best things we could do was detox and detoxing to me doesn't have a negative connotation. Like a lot of people hear the word detox and they're like, Oh gosh, she's going to be talking about something painful. And really detox is the process of eliminating toxins. Um, and it is a process of transformation of health of all kinds of things. And to me, that looks like freedom. And so, um, freedom is huge for me. That is my year for this word, my word for this year. That was great. My year for this word. Anyhow, my word for this year. And, um, when you are detoxing, you're also being empowered. Um, and, and that's awesome. And freedom leads to empowerment as well being free to make good choices, being free to realize, okay, I can be healthy. You know, a lot of us get into a place where we think I'm stuck. I'm, I'm never going to get beyond, you know, all these toxic thoughts come in. And, and hey, Amy, really, yeah, I have somebody trying to get in one of my members. She said, I'm trying to get into this Zoom presentation. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know. You can forward the link to her. I can't do that right now. I don't know how to do that. Okay. Um, you should be able to copy it from the from the Facebook page. Okay. Phone and forward it to her. Um, so anyhow, being free is a huge part of what detox means to me. Um, why do we need to detox? Because we are exposed to toxins all day, every day, and our food is more polluted and less nutritious than it's ever been before. More chemicals are on our food and in our food, in our water, in our household cleaners, um, and literally in our products that we utilize every day, from lotions to, I mean, the furniture that we sit on because they've sprayed it with fire retardants. And I mean, we are literally chronically exposed to toxins um, and heavy metals. We must detox regularly in order to get some of this out of our system. Um, also, we're exposed to germs all the time. You know, I mean, they did a study on the Mojave Desert and there are germs out there. There's bacteria out there. There are viruses out there. We are exposed to that all the time, everywhere we go. Germs aren't the problem. Our problem is we have to support our own immune system and support our um, ability to fight those germs. Um, and having a healthy immune system and a working lymphatic system helps our body fight the good fight, right? But my question is, if you're using great probiotics, which, you know, there are a lot of different great probiotics out there. I'm going to talk about Life9 because that is the product that I choose to use. Um, and you're using incredibly great supplements, but you can't get the most out of them because you're putting 
fish into a dirty fish tank. I don't know if any of y'all saw my post, but it was a fish bowl that was like incredibly murky. And um, we don't want to put good, healthy fish into a dirty fish tank, right? If you're using that, you've got to make sure those great supplements, those great probiotics, that's wonderful. But if your body cannot absorb them, that's a problem. And so detoxing and cleansing is a process that we should all be doing. And remember, detox isn't just physical. Um, and we're going to address some of that as we walk through this. Some of the other areas that we should detox in our life are our environment, you know, EMF. Um, what shows are you watching on TV? What are you exposing yourself to daily? Um, then there are mental toxins. What are you speaking over yourself? And emotional toxins that we need to work on. So the first organ of this year that we are gonna work on, yay, is the colon or large intestine, AKA um, the large intestine. And so I'm gonna show you um, the book that I'm getting a lot of my information out of is called Ultimate Balance. It is by Leanne Deerduff. She is a chiropractor. She's also studied hugely about hormones and um, gut health. She is amazing. She's also, she and her husband, who is also a chiropractor, also wrote the book Inner Transformations. And so I'm going to be utilizing both of those books as well as a few others. And the reason I'm showing you the books and the reason I'm going to be reading some information out of the books is so that you all understand, hey, I have to use my references too. Um, and so getting that book out and looking some things up is a great habit to get into. Um, yeah, I mean, oftentimes I'm, you know, I don't remember if y'all remember that show. Do you want to, what was the show? It was a, it was a game show where they were like, you can text, call out to a friend or poll the audience or, you know what I mean? So sometimes I poll the audience. I put a Facebook post out there. Sometimes I make a call to a friend or a text to a friend and go, hey man, what do I do for so-and-so? And so, but sometimes I actually have to get my book out and look, and that's okay. That's a good thing to do. Um, so the colon or large intestine, um, one of the a well known saying along among alternative healthcare providers is death begins in the colon. And Hippocrates actually said all disease begins in the gut. So this isn't new information. This is new to us information, but this isn't new information. We are starting our detox journey with the colon because there is absolutely no point in detoxing other organs or systems of the body if you haven't detoxed your colon first. You wouldn't want to detox another organ only to have the toxins get stuck at the colon and then get reabsorbed. And that's what happens when you decide oh, I'm just going to randomly pick my liver to detox, but you haven't cleaned out your colon first. The colon is full. Well, we'll get to that in just a second. So that is what its job is, is to absorb. And so that is what it would do if you detox other organs first. So let's talk about what a healthy colon looks like. This is actually, I don't know if you can see it very well, but that's actually what a healthy colon looks like. So it has three parts. It has the ascending colon, the transverse, which it goes across, and then you have your descending or sigmoid colon and the rectum, the rectum. <clears throat> and the large intestine starts just after the small intestine at the ileocecal valve. And it's made up of the three parts that I just talked about, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and the descending colon. It ends in the sigmoid colon with the rectum. The colon is responsible for absorbing water, electrolytes, bile salts, vitamins, many of which are created by bacteria that's located in the colon. You need that good, healthy bacteria in the colon. This is one of the reasons probiotics are so important, and it's also the, col the colon is also very rich in blood vessels to carry the nutrients from there or toxins, if they're stuck there, out to other areas of the body. The large intestine is filled with mucous glands, the purpose of which is to coat the chyme, which is your chewed, partially digested food, 
actually digested food by this point. So it can pass over the villi, which are these finger-like little protrusions, um, easier and protect itself from drugs, heavy metals, and other harmful matter. So that mucus is really important, but you don't want too much. The villi are those tiny like um, finger projections, and that's where all the absorption of the nutrition takes place. On those little finger protrusions is where all the absorption takes place. In order to keep a healthy colon, it is best to drink tons, not really tons, plenty of water. So eight, eight ounce cups a day at least. And a lot of us do that, but some of us don't. Some of us just don't think about it. And I'm not talking, well, I drank four glasses of tea, I had six cups of coffee, then I had a Diet Coke, and then I had, well, I did have that one Mountain Dew. No, none of that counts. That's all great, that's all, not really, but that's all fluid, fine. But none of it counts to your water intake. Eight, eight ounce glasses of water is on top of any of those other, your wine doesn't count, your coffee doesn't count, your tea doesn't count, you gotta have water. And it needs to be good water. You also need to eat a, high, a diet high in fiber and low in po processed refined foods. We've all heard that before. What are some signs of an unhealthy colon? Now we get to, that's what the colon does. That's what a healthy colon looks like. What is an unhealthy colon? Okay, so these are just some simple signs. A coated tongue. If you have a coated tongue, especially in the morning, you probably have an, uh, an, an unhealthy colon. An anus that itches, an itching anus. How lovely is that? I get to say that in front of all of you all. Mm -hmm. Less than one bowel movement a day. Stools that are not well formed. Mucus in your stool. Excessive foul smelling gas bad breath and body odors, cramping in the lower abdominal areas, cramping, um, skin eruptions, bumps, and rashes. We don't think about it, but our skin is another area that toxins come out. Psoriasis, eczema, fungus or yeast infections, and stools that are difficult or hard to pass. Those are all signs of an unhealthy colon. So I know I had a lot of those signs. Um, I had, I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis many years ago and have since um, rectified that. However, um, a lot of the, those issues I had, um, and I still battle with some of it. Um, and so I, I notice, I'm like, okay, wow, okay, I need, to, I need to work on this more. And that's one of the reasons I realized I still take toxins in every day and I'm not cleansing as much as I need to. So this year is a year of doing um, each body system throughout the year. All right, so in extreme cases, the colon can become so clogged as a result of poor dietary choices and insufficient fiber and water that the colon expands with mucoid plaque and excess fecal matter to become a mega colon which can become as much as five times the normal colon size. The weight of the transverse, remember the transverse is the one that goes across the top of, like under your ribs there. It can become so large, so heavy that it prolapses and presses down on the uterus and ovaries of women and the prostate, man, um, pr prostate gland in men, which causes infertility. It's quite common to have infertility problems because of a megacolon or a congested colon. It can also press down on the bladder, causing discomfort and infection, and it can lead to dangerous adhesions between organs because it's putting that pressure on it. Even worse, toxins that are retained too long in the colon can fester and create a huge range of disease processes, even up to cancer, especially. And remember, digestive cancers have outranked breast cancer and lung cancer from smoking. 
They are the leading cause of cancer. All right, yay, all that good news. Um, I wanna read a little bit more from Inner Transformations. I'm reading from page 29. All right, let me see. Oh, actually, yeah, 29, okay. Dr. Anthony, um, so I'm just not even gonna worry about saying their names because they're really horrific names to try to pronounce and I, I, you don't really care. It's on page 29 if you wanna go look at it in the book. So, um, but he is from a gastroenterologist from New York and a professor of gastroenterology. And he says, after concluding a 25 year study of over 5,000 cases, every physician should realize that intestinal toxins are the most important primary and contributing causes of almost every health problem of the human body. Oh, okay. So let's do this before we, you know, do a whole bunch of other things. Um, another one says that basically 65 different health problems are caused by a toxic colon everything from arthritis to fibromyalgia to dermatitis, um, mental problems, and um, all kinds of predictable problems can happen because of ailments in the colon. So just like Hippocrates says, all disease begins in the gut, all death starts, death starts at the colon. Um, and one more thing, and we're not going to um, address this too much tonight, but I want you all to understand that another serious ailment that occurs when this, the thick lining, there, there becomes a thick lining in the colon that it's called mucoid plaque. Um, and it just gets built up and built up. And let me tell you how. It's because when we eat, um, sorry, those are my kids in the background screaming. Nice. Um, when we eat, processed white flour and we eat dairy that increases mucus production, it becomes like a thick glue. Think about when you make um, Christmas ornaments with your kids. You put milk and white flour together, right? And you make a glue and you bake it in the oven at about 150 degrees. And what does it become? A hard, hard substance that's like glue that you can't really break. Okay, so we eat white flour, very highly processed, with lots of sugar in it, and then we add dairy to that. Mm, yum, let's have a piece of cake. I mean, I'm not, and I'm, and I'm not coming down on anyone. I want you all to hear what we're doing to ourselves. With a big glass of milk, and we're making glue, basically, that sticks into our colon, that then causes it not to be able, those little, those little remember, finger-like protrusions can absorb what we need to absorb and it becomes stuck. And then we bake it, you know, we're about 98 degrees mm, and it just sits in there and it becomes, that's when we can become megalocolon and it becomes toxic. So one of the other serious ailment that occurs when that thick lining is blocking the absorption of nutrients and the contents are not moving along rapidly is a parasite infestation. And parasites live on the stuff that you eat and are unable to digest or pass, especially sugars and starches. And in return, they excrete toxins that make you sick. So it's not really fair at all. We're like, hey man, come on. So I just want you all to understand, um, you can't really get rid of parasites until you do the colon cleanse either. So when she says here, when I see a person who has intestinal parasites and who also needs a colon cleanse, I usually have them clean up the colon first before attacking the parasite infestation. And we pick up parasites really easily. If you have pets in your home, it's very easy to get parasites from them, even though you, know, you can wash your hands and all the things. Um, food that we eat, they're just, they're, they're, they're everywhere. And some of them are not horrible for us, but a lot of them are pretty terrible. Um, 
So if the, if the colon is still clogged, when the, if you try to do a parasite flush first, they're just gonna return. And so you've gotta do the colon flush before you do the parasite cleanse. Um, let me see one of the other things. Oh, last paragraph I'll read in here is, well, I say that, but I've got all these markings in here, so watch out. Um, another reason that death begins in the colon is because toxic colon pushes toxins to other organs of elimination, such as the kidney and the liver. So if you're not eliminating fast enough, you reabsorb the toxins over and over and over again back in your colon. Okay, guess what? Now you're going to the liver, now you're going to the kidney, now they try to excrete them, they go back into your colon that's clogged and you can't, so it's a vicious cycle. Um, and that really um, causes, that's when you start seeing skin eruptions and things like that because your skin starts to be the last ditch elimination system. Um, leading to blemishes and skin diseases because your body is trying to get those toxins out of it one way or another. All of that begins in the colon and the colon has the ability to drag the whole body down. So we really need to, to be careful with that. All right, so we're gonna talk now the best ways to cleanse. Um, and we just talked about why it's so important to cleanse. Now we're gonna talk about the best ways to cleanse and some of the products that we can use to do that. One of the, one of the things I wanna remind you all um, is that laxatives, you know, I don't remember if you all remember, but the X-lax when we were little and it was, it was um, cho in chocolate. <laughs> and like my mom would hide it because we were kids and we thought they were chocolate bars. And yeah, anyhow, gross. But, you know, people often become addicted and um, dependent on laxatives. And laxatives can really cause the motility of the colon, the, that peristaltic activity, which, you know, squeezes things out, to um, be reduced. So we want to be very careful in using laxative and even enemas. Um, you become dependent on enemas instead of increasing your body's own ability to um, eliminate. So I just wanted to kind of let y'all know. Um, so in order to kind of know why and how to cleanse, we've got to know what your goal is. All right, so our goal as a human race and as people is um, eat three meals a day, you should have three bowel movements a day. Uh, where do you think that stuff is going if you aren't getting rid of it all day? Or for several days? Or a week? I've often wondered that. Mm -hmm. Most people carry around about seven pounds of stagnant, impacted fecal matter in their colons. Yuck! I know. Lots of people carry around more than that. So the, good, the goal for a good colon function is two to three bowel movements a day that are fast and easy to pass, well-formed, and float in the toilet. Okay, I got a question about the float thing. Okay. I, I don't have floaters. <laughs> Girl, Why? You know, I, mean, I, I don't know. I've never had a floater. <laughs> um, you'll have to look that up. You, that would be a good one. Google that for us. But I believe it has to do with... Um, I just poop float. Okay, here we go. All right. Amy, Amy, can you hear? Yes. Oh, yeah, it's Tracy, I'm sorry. Yeah, I th it typically means you not get enough fiber or not, uh, not right. enough... It, it's, uh, I mean, it really takes a lot of water. A lot of water and a lot more fiber than we think. I heard that you should drink um, half your body weight. Mm -hmm. Well, I do that easily. I was just wondering about the float part. So it's just fiber. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah. It's, it, well, that's what I, I would float. <clears throat> Not to be obnoxious. Sorry, that was a little bit obnoxious. <laughs> if we're going to talk about poo, let's talk about poo. I said wood floats. Hey, you know, you're eating fiber, it's kind of like wood, it, but it is, it's that non, our body cannot um, break it down 
We got to have good fiber. Okay, so a good you know, pull flax, and cleanse. Put some flax. Flax makes your, you know, just put flax in like your shakes or yogurt or absolutely old flax seed kind of makes it kind of makes the stuff bulky. Mm -hmm. Make your poo bulky and it makes it float. Absolutely. Flax seeds. All right, so a good colon cleanse is well balanced to support the kidneys and liver while you cleanse. A lot of toxins are released while you're cleansing and when they enter your bloodstream um, and get to your liver, it could make you nauseous, headachey, or weak. So you really need to support your liver and kidneys while you're cleansing as well. All right, so let's see. Um, we're going to talk about some of the Young Living products now. And the, one of the reasons I recommend Young Living's colon cleanse is that it tastes good and it doesn't make you sick while you do it. Hey, that's always a good, you know, that's always something. Patty's like, yes, you know, I mean, nobody really wants to get sick while they're cleansing. I mean, it's just not pleasant. And you can regulate it according to how you feel, what your body needs. Um, something I tell people all the time is listen to your body, listen to your body. And um, that is not something that we in Western society really get taught is, hey, you got to listen to your body, but you really got to listen to your body. Um, and, I, and I think part of that is not necessarily um, our fault or our doctor's fault. It's because we take a pill that makes those symptoms go away. And so we're not really listening to our body. We're trying to make symptoms go away. But, you know, as I've said in the past, that's like putting duct tape over a check engine light. You know, I got rid of the check engine light. Well, no, it's still on underneath there. Your body's telling you something, but you're ignoring it. And, and we get used to doing that over and over and over again. And then we're like, oh my gosh, how did I get in this shape? Well, <laughs> Your body's going, I've been trying to talk to you for, you know, 20 years. So we have to start listening. So that's one of the great things about um, Young Living's system is you can listen to your own body. All right. So I'm going to go through now. And y'all, I mean, again, I'm using the desk reference. I love this book. It makes me happy, happy, happy because I can look up all of the different products and how they work. So Young Living has what's called um, the Cleansing Trio. And that's, um, those are three of the products that I'm gonna talk about. Um, then I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the enzymes. And then there's also a program called the Five Day Nut Nutritive Cleanse. A lot of people do that as well. Um, just remember when you are specifically working on your colon, it may take some time especially if you've had chronic constipation or you've never done a cleanse before and you're as old as I am, you know, it, it's going to take some time to get that colon really cleansed. So just give yourself grace. That's why I'm doing every two months instead of, okay, monthly, we're going to pick an organ and we're going to hit it hard. Well, guess what? It may take you longer than 30 days to actually get your colon as clean as you need it to be. If you've been, you know, living a normal American life and eating, you know, pasta and white bread and drinking milk all your life. I mean, I'm, no judgment here. I'm just saying, you know, it may take a little while. So the first product that I'm going to talk about is dun, 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 Comfortone. Okay. And I'm literally reading from the desk reference. So if you all have a question... Um, please either look in your own desk reference or unmute yourself and ask me, but literally I am reading from the desk reference. So comfort tone, and this helps me understand why I want comfort tone instead of a lot of other products that I see out there that I'm like, well, you know, that'd probably work fine. Um, no, we know a, when oils are added to supplements, it makes them what? 68 to 80% more bioavailable. That's huge. And um, your body knows what to do with these. So comfort tone, it's a, it's a, you need herbs in your cleanse. You can't just do it with oils alone. You need herbs too. So 
I always, I always want to say herbs. You need herbs, okay? You just do. All right, I'm kidding. Um, so it is a combination of herbs and essential oils, and it supports the health of the entire digestive system. It helps eliminate residue from the colon by enhancing its ab ability to function optimally because it supports the, the peristalsis, those wave-like contractions that help move things along, right? It strengthens the system that delivers the nutri nutrients to the rest of the body. It is a combination of powerful essential oils that are anti-parasitic. Hey, so I'm getting double hit here. That's awesome. I need this. Anti-inflammatory. Well, if you've got stuff stuck in there, you probably have some inflammation as well. And ease intestinal cramps. It helps soothe discomfort in the digestive tract and it aids in the elimination process. Um, and there is more, but it is specifically, um, it has Akatea in it, which helps reduce candida, which if you have sugar and starch and a mucoid plaque in your colon, you've got candida overgrowth. Just kind of accept that as um, how it is. Um, it is the best product for cleansing the colon while it benefits the liver, gallbladder, and the overall process of digestion, okay? Because it also has ginger, tarragon, peppermint, rosemary, anise, and German chamomile in it. So Comfortone. All right. Basically, I'm going to be real with y'all. It says in here, you can either... Have four days where you can't leave your house, or you can do this in the gentle, pleasant way. I'm gonna do it in the gentle, pleasant way because I've done the blast out system and it's a little over the top and I don't wanna do that. I mean, <laughs> Lisa's like this, no, please no. No, just say no, okay. Well, I mean, y'all pick. All of this is in inner, inner transformation. Um, I'm on page 32 now, but with, Either method, you should drink three quarts, three quarts of water a day. That's 12 eight ounce glasses of water a day. It sounds like a lot, but it's quite doable. And you need to make sure you're doing it. And I take another sip of my water. Okay, I usually suggest, this is what she says on page 33, that my patient's colon cleanse is to start with one Comfortone capsule in the morning. And the next day, take a capsule in the morning and another at night. You're going to increase, and, and I'll, I'll type all this up, you guys, and put it in the um, event so you know, or I'll take a picture. I mean, she's got it all written out. It's, it's amazing. Increase by one capsule a day, alternating day and night until you're getting two to three bowel movements a day. The comfort tone is designed to restore that peristalsis to the colon. Please don't be alarmed if your intestines get a little gurgly, okay? They're gonna be moving like they've never moved before. So they may start making noise, okay? That's what they're talking to you. That's all it is, don't get nervous. They even might get a little sore as the comfort tone increases activity where once there was only stagnation. That's normal, you guys. We should get a little sore when we're you know, just like, okay, I worked out yesterday and I'm feeling sore. Well, guess what? You're moving these, these peristal, the peristalsis is moving again for the first time. And you're like, why is, why am I abdomen sore? Well, you're moving things you haven't moved in a long time. If you're getting that stagnant stuff out, it's really important. Um, and then she says, if you have been doing all of this for a week, so you worked up to your comfort zone and you still haven't achieved two to three bowel movements a day, add a drop or two of peppermint to a glass of your water and that'll really help. So awesome. I mean, we, I do that anyhow, add peppermint to my water. So perfect. I will definitely make sure that I get this into the event so that you all know because trying to take all this in notes, I don't want you to have to do that, but I do want y'all to hear what is a great cleanse and it's easy and it's not hard so comfort zone in my cart i got it this month 
I was excited. The next one, hmm. when you ha are starting to have those two to three bowel movements a day, you're gonna begin taking ICP. All right, ICP. All right, let me get to that in my desk reference. Y'all are watching me flip between all kinds of things here tonight, but I'd rather you all get this information. All right, ICP is a great colon cleanser with an advanced mix of fibers that scour out residue, okay? If you've ever had diverticulitis, if you've ever had diverticulosis, if you have never cleansed, this is a really good product to use. A healthy digestive system is important for the proper function of all other systems. ICP provides ingredients such as psyllium, oat bran, and flax, fennel seeds, to form a combination of soluble and insoluble fiber. You have to have both. It's very important. Enhanced with a special blend of essential oils, the fibers work to decrease the buildup of waste, dispel gas, improve nutrient absorption, and help maintain a healthy heart. Okay, we don't think, how does, how does our colon affect our heart? It very much does affect our heart. So I'm gonna say this to everyone. If you have high blood pressure and you've never done a colon cleanse, um, this is one way that you can really look at cholesterol as well. You can look at reducing these things in your body because in order to have a healthy body, you have to have a healthy colon. If you're, you have skin eruptions and your body is, um, you have an unhealthy colon. If you have, I mean, we got to work on your colon first, then we can work on everything else, but got to get that colon plan. So ICP is really important. It's an important part of this. Um, it also has enzymes in it. So it has enzymes of lipase, protease, phytase, pepsidase, and aloe vera leaf juice. And then it also has essential oils. We know that. Okay. So what, going back to what Dr. Deirdreff says, Deirdreff says, once you're having two to three bowel movements daily, begin taking ICP. One teaspoon in the morning, mix it with juice and drink it down quickly. Add a half a teaspoon per day until you reach one tablespoon in the morning and one tablespoon in the evening. Stay on the comfort tone and essential zyme and keep drinking lots of water. Um, and you're going to keep doing this. And I'll, I'm going to read about essential zyme in just a minute. But um, you're going to continue this colon cleanse until the mucoid plaque. Yuck, not such pleasant stuff. Drops out of the colon. And it may come as one long tube. And you may go, oh my gosh, I just passed a snake. Nope, you've just passed the mucoid plaque. Pretty, pretty nasty. You can go look up pictures, Google it. Yeah, it, it ain't real pretty. Um, and it may take six weeks. It may take, I mean, some people it takes six months. It, it really is just going to depend on how built up that is within you. So it is important to do some other things. If you know you've got this buildup or you're pretty confident that you do, you may want to do some other things as well. And I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, one of the other things we take, the cleansing trio is a trio because the last thing in it is essentials. There we go. Essentials on. And um, I buy those three together in the, cleansing trio kit because it's cheaper. Just kind of an FYI. Um, you're gonna take essential zyme caplets three times daily between meals, drinking your water. And let me read about essential zymes now. La, la, la. Amy? Yes, ma'am. A question was asked in the chat room. Do we okay. eat regular meals? Okay, she actually addresses that. Huh, I love that. <laughs> okay, hang on. While on the colon cleanse, 
You can take whatever supplements you want to take. Many people want to know what they should eat while on the colon cleanse. I generally don't put people on a different diet while cleansing, but it doesn't hurt to change to a more natural and healthy diet. The cleanse will begin to assist you in changing your diet naturally because your body will automatically be drawn to healthier foods. And um, just to kind of let you know, the cleanse will take care of this for good if you change your diet and eat less white flour products, more fruits and vegetables and whole grain products. If you don't change your diet, milk and white flour will again create a paste in the colon and the inside and make it unable to function properly. This is the leading cause of colon cancer. So after cleaning up your colon, you can do that again. You can go back to eating what you, you know, that, the paste. It reminds me of kids in kindergarten when we had the glue that was in the thing and they would get the jar and then stick it in their mouth. I mean, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Jennifer Bond, that made me think of you, sorry. <laughs> kindergarten teacher. All right, last one is if you decide to go back and drink milk and eat, I mean, and I'm not saying ever, but you know, on a daily and eat those, you know, pro totally processed foods all the time, you should probably cleanse every six months or at least once a year, your colon like this at least. So I'm going to say I'd just rather not have that stuff personally, but that's me. Anyhow. Um, okay. So. Let me read about, so one of the great things um, as I'm on this journey of healing and learning and growing, um, I am learning about um, enzymes. I had never in my life heard about enzymes, didn't know the first darn thing about enzymes. I got to be 48, 49 years old before I even ever heard the word enzyme. And I was like, enzyme, what the heck's an enzyme? And then I realized, oh, they're needed for every function of your body. And as you age, you don't make as many as you used to, and you need to supplement, and our food doesn't have as many as it used to, and you need to supplement with enzymes. And I was like, oh, well, dang. So the great thing about Young Living is they have a lot of different enzyme products. So like my kids take Allerzyme every day. Um, I mean, there are, and actually, I probably could take Allerzyme every day as well. I mean, there are a lot of great enzyme products. If you have questions about enzymes, we can talk about enzymes, um, but I'm just gonna talk about a couple of different enzymes. Um, so the one that comes in the cleansing trio is Essentialzyme. It's an advanced multi-enzyme complex that promotes digestion and assists in assimilation of nutrients. Remember, you've got a coated colon, you can't assimilate those nutrients. And one thing that I've realized that enzymes do it speeds up our metabolism because it helps us assimilate or actually utilize the nutrients within our food. How cool is that? When you're getting the nutrition, you're not as hungry, hmm, either. Okay, enzyme supplementation is particularly important for people suffering from chronic pancreatitis, cystic fibro, well, anyhow, cystic fibrosis and any condition where the pancreas duct or common bile duct is blocked. We got to have enzymes in our intestines. Um, essential zyme is a bilayer peppermint coated caplet that combines pure essential oils. Remember what that does, that makes them more absorbable. Herbs and pancreatic and plant derived enzymes to support overall digestion. It is a dual time release technology. It increases its effectiveness during digestion. It helps reestablish proper enzyme balance and it improves intestinal flora and may help retard the aging process. What, what? Okay, wait a minute. I just took 51. I'm ready to retard my aging process with some enzymes. Heck yeah. This is a high quality complex enzyme formulated, formula created to help improve and aid digestion, elimination of toxic waste from the body, which in turn means more energy and vitality. Awesome. It is awesome. So it goes over what all of the um, ingredients are. I'm not gonna do that tonight. The other one that is really good is Detoxime. Um, Detoxime combines powerful and effective essential oils with a myriad of fast acting enzymes that assist in the complete digestive process, helping to detoxify and promote cleansing, which is essential for maintaining and building health. 
Um, and it goes into what all, but this really helps with, again, absorption of nutrients and supplements and provides energy, which is great. So when we detox, we actually can become a whole, have a whole lot more energy. I don't know if any of y'all have ever done a sugar fast, um, you know, taking sugar out of your diet or, you know, the Daniel fast or any kind of fast. The first day you're like, oh, it's horrible. I hate it. And then by day three, you're like, or you have a headache or whatever. Um, by day three, you're like, oh my gosh, my clarity of thought is amazing. And I feel really good. And I went through the whole day without thinking about a nap. I mean, it's pretty amazing how much a, like changing your diet and doing some detoxing will increase your energy levels. Truly, it's amazing. So those are two of the um, enzymes that I really like. I mean, we use pretty much all of them, but in the cleansing trio, you're going to get essential zyme and it is amazing. So does anybody have any other questions real quick? I have a comment. Uh -huh. um, um, I am a member of Lindsay Elmore thing and she takes detox on she takes five of them every day during the winter and mm -hmm. she takes um allerzyme five of them during the spring absolutely i'm so, telling you if we increase our enzyme our we will increase our immune uh, immune system we will it's amazing what they help mm -hmm. within our body well dr como was on the uh ship and i got to have dinner with her and she was talking about enzymes and she said if you take the enzymes like a lot of times we take the essential zyme for with a meal mm -hmm. and you take the essential zyme caplet between meals yes said, take them on an empty stomach not just with meals because those little guys are running around looking for something to eat and they will literally eat scar tissue oh they'll they'll Yes, you guys, um, I, there's a study that I just read about um, enzyme depletion in children and how when we increase their enzymes, their ADD goes away. Their, I mean, symptoms of all kinds of mental issues are eliminated when they are actually getting the enzymes they need because that's how they absorb the nutrients in their food. Right. If you do not have enzymes, you cannot absorb nutrients. And we need nutrients. Um, I wanted to let you all know too, there is a whole chapter in the desk reference. If you have the desk reference, pardon me, if you have the desk reference, chapter 17 is all about cleansing. Um, the first one of the first one, it, it taught it gives an overview of cleansing, like everyone needs it. We need to be cleansing. Why is cleansing good? Um and it goes through the liver pretty hard. We're gonna hit the liver next time, March. Um, liver gallbladder is in March. Um, but it, it gives you a ton of information um, on ways you can cleanse and even ways that um, aren't necessarily just young living, but there is a ton of information on cleansing in the desk reference, chapter 17. So. I loved it. I read it and I was like, oh my gosh, I need more. You know, I mean, our little, little peon brains can only hold, handle so much. And then I go, okay, I got to go. Ah, too much. I'm starting to flap. So I just, you know, I have to put it away. But I wanted you all to get information and know where you can go to be able to utilize that. Um, and page 468 in the desk reference talks about the digestive system and the different and, and in your little EOPR, if you have one of those um, essential oil pocket references, look up digestive system and it'll talk about all the different issues within the digestive system and ways you can help it. And enzymes is pretty much going to be in every single one of those. Um, so I wanted you to understand why cleansing is so important. I wanted you to understand what healthy looks like, what unhealthy colon looks like, why we all need to do this. But I also wanted to let you all know, and I'm gonna put this over here now. Um, that if you are detoxing your colon and you're taking the time to do that and you're 
you know, using your stuff and okay, I've got, I'm doing all this. And then you're deciding I'm going to clean my house with Lysol and wash my body with, you know, toxic chemicals and do all the, you're, you're reabsor reabsorbing. Remember our skin is our largest organ of absorption as well as, you know, detoxing if it needs to be. We need to be careful what we're putting on and in our body and in our environment. So that was one of the other ways we can detox is our environment. So I wanted to really quickly go through some easy ways. The easiest ways to start detoxing your environment are one, change out your laundry detergent. I use Thieves laundry detergent, but I don't care if you use all free and clear. I don't care what you choose to use, but get rid of fragrance and no dryer sheets or um, fabric softener because that stuff is toxic. It is hormone um, imbalancing. It's a disruptor of your hormones and it causes all kinds of issues. So think about you put your clothes on every day, you sleep on your sheets, you dry yourself off with your towel, you are chronically exposed to that if it is um, toxic, if it is covered in, you know, the dryer sheet, the gain smell. Oh, it's not, I talked to a lady last night. He's like, I just love the way it smells. And I'm like, well, you wouldn't if you detoxed because once you're detoxed, you can't take the smell anymore. I have a hard time going down the laundry aisle anymore at, at Kroger. Um, so laundry detergent is, and, and Dr. Ali actually said that at convention a couple of years ago, he said, one of the best things you can do for your gut health is change your laundry detergent. And I was like, heck to the yeah. So, it, and it's easy. Um, the next one, use Thieves Household Cleaner. I mean, vinegar and water is great, but Thieves Household Cleaner actually supports your immune system while you're cleaning. I'm like, hey, double whammy. I can eat it if I want to. Not that I would, but you know, I mean, if you've got kids in your life, pets in your life, you in your life, get rid of the toxic chemicals under your kitchen sink and start using Thieves House Cleaner. It's an easy, no-brainer, cost-effective way to make an easy, toxic, toxin-free um, lifestyle change. The other two quick products that I would use quickest, fastest to change out um, that make the biggest bang for your buck is deodorant mm -hmm. and toothpaste. Get rid of the top. Hey, I've got all these lymph nodes right here. I'm going to shave as a woman and get as much of my top layer of skin off as possible, that protective stuff and the hair off. And then I'm going to put this toxic aluminum filled chemical all on top of it. Mm. Okay, you guys, I'm sorry. I could just go on and on about that. That makes me like, yeah. Yes, there may be a detox period if you're changing out your deodorant, but we need to do it. Um, it is hugely important. Breast cancer rates are higher than ever before. Infertility rates are higher than ever before. You guys, that is an easy no-brainer way to do things. And toothpaste. We've got five, four or five different kinds of toothpaste. If you can't find a flavor you like, come on. Um, Thieves toothpaste is fluoride free, which is great because fluoride is terrible for you. It is amazing for your oral health. Uh, I have incredible testimonies from it. The new whitening stuff is awesome. I've only used it like five times and I'm already like, oh, they're sparkly. So <laughs> Lisa's laughing at me. <laughs> but I mean, truly, I'm like, oh my gosh, that they really do. It really is awesome. Cause I gave the first ones that I, cause you can only order one a month of the white. I don't know if y'all know that, but you can only, they, they limit you. So I gave them to my kids, you know? And so now I'm finally getting my own. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, I follow the doctor. What's his name? Oh, he's Doug Corrigan. Yeah. And he just did a post about fluoride and curcumin, the turmeric. Yep. Um, in our MindWise and Master Formula is major, major help in taking the fluoride out of our system. Oh, yeah. Master, the Master Formula vitamins. I just got them. Awesome. So, uh, they're supposed to be really awesome for that. So he just awesome. did a whole post about that. Cool. Um, Okay, so those are some basic, quickie environmental things you can do. 
um, because I want to make sure you all understand that if you're doing all this work to cleanse your body, quit the stuff out here as much as possible as well. Now we get to the fun part. Okay, so, okay, we talked about what a healthy colon looks like. We talked about um, what an unhealthy colon looks like. We talked about how to cleanse the colon. Okay, that's our physical. We talked about our environment. Now we're going to talk about our emotional. Hmm. Good emotional. night. What? <laughs> uh, uh uh, no, no. Okay, so what is, what is a toxic colon? Um, look like why why does it happen all right so um, I got a lot of this information again out of the ultimate balance book and there are some other books that are great for learning about how our emotions can wreak havoc in our body releasing emotional patterns with essential oils feelings buried alive never die awesome and Heal your body. So I looked in all of these, kind of got some ideas. Um, some of the most common underlying emotions that are seen when you have issues with your colon or your large intestine are fear of letting go. Okay, so that's figuratively and literally fear of letting go. All right, got to let that go, people. Let go, let God. I know you've all heard that before. Easier said than done. And remember, I'm coming from a history of, I had large intestine issues for many years. Holding on to the past, is the second big one. Core beliefs about yourself, inferiority or self-worth. Ding, 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 ding. So, a lot of those um, may not, in the beginning, sound like something you're dealing with. Like, I was like, I don't have any problem with any of that. Of course, you know, that was before the layers started coming off. And I realized that, oh, okay. So emotions are just like anything else. You detox in layers. What you're ready to get rid of, you will. And, um, I had to realize some, some hard things. And so um, that is a huge part of more that you can do for your colon. Um, some of the essential oils are release. Hey, that letting go thing. Release is amazing for that. If it is anger, you can put it over your liver or you can just diffuse it. I love the smell of release. Um, another one, of course, Digize. Digize is great topically. You can rub it right on your belly. Inner child. A lot of our issues with self-worth and um, holding on to the past and fear of letting go have to do with things that happened to us as children we had no control over. Past traumas. So inner child is an amazing oil. I love the way it smells. Um, there are some scriptures you can say with it that like make me incredibly happy. Um, if you had some of those traumas and you're aware of those traumas, um, Trauma Life and Sarah are also great oils to help balance you emotionally. And let me just say this. Um, oftentimes we don't want to deal with them because it, it's going to be painful to a certain extent. Ugh, come on, you know, or, you know, I couldn't help it. It happened to me. It, it is what it is. I'm just going to move on. Yeah. But if you do not process some of that, whether it was abuse or a, a death or an accident or trauma, whatever it was, if you never process that, that goes to that feelings buried alive, never die. You're pushing those things down it's going to come out somewhere in your body and you got to deal with it. Trust me, <laughs> I'm dealing with it. Um, another one is transformation and highest potential. Those are all oils. And this all comes from this ultimate balance book. You can trust me. It is, it is a, you are a work in progress and you got to find which ones are, are going to work for you, but it's, um, 
it's pretty amazing how well these also support you as you journey along this cleansing. Um, you may also want to put the oils on the Vitaflex areas that support that organ. And those Vitaflex areas, um, you can find them in your um, little EOPR. Those feet, the Vitaflex or those feet, you know, or reflexology, okay, or the hands. And you can put those oils right on there. Um, and that's a great place to put them. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk to you all about is a spiritual detox, spiritual slash mental detox. What are you speaking over yourself every day? Positive words are so very important over ourselves and others. How do you speak to yourself? Do you tell yourself, I am worthy? I love myself. I'm beautiful. I mean, it's hard, especially as women, to actually say those things or even think to believe it. These are important things. You are beautiful. You are worthy. You are loved. Because, okay, so for me, I believe I have a very strong belief in Jesus Christ and I believe God's word is truth. And so if I believe God's word is truth, then I have to believe what his word says about me. Because I can't just choose and pick what part of God's word is truth. If it's truth, it's truth. And so I have to believe that what he says about me is truth as well. And so if any of you all want a picture of this, um, who I am in Christ, I mean, it goes ever over. How I mean, he loves us. He loves me. And I can say that. So. Um, and then, you know, that spiritual detox also goes into what are you exposing yourself to? What music are you listening to? I'm not saying you got to listen to, you know, oh, every day, every minute, but you know, I mean, it's important to know what you're continuously exposing yourself to. What movies are you watching? What books are you reading? What TV shows are you watching? I mean, cut the toxic crap. If you really want to get detox and be free, freedom is going to look different. Um, what society tells us is normal. Guess what? We should be running from that. We're not in, we're in the world, but not of it. Um, so anyhow, I won't preach too much tonight. I did want to remind you all that um, Philippians 4, 8, and I got to get in my Bible to read it because I don't know it by heart. Sorry, ladies. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Right? God tells us what to think on and to rest in him. Being busy isn't nearly as important as learning how to rest in him. And that's part of letting go. All right, you guys, that's it for me. That's all I got for you. Um, hopefully I wasn't too preachy, but I just, um, it's so important to not just address our physical body, but to address our body, as, uh, to address our bodies as a whole. We are mind, body, spirit, emotions, and we have to address them all in order to be really, really healthy. So, all right, you guys, God bless you all. Have a great night. And um, as soon as I can figure out how to get the recording where it's supposed to go, I will try to upload it to um, the event so you all can listen to it again or, or pass it on to friends. And then I will pass on any notes or um, any the actual typing up of the colon cleanse. What, what that looks like. But the, the cleansing trio is one that I really, really like. All right, you guys. Take care. What's, have a great next, night. In, what's next in February? Oh, we don't have a um, organ in February. We're going to continue to work on the colon if you all, and, and we can do some different write-ups. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great products that support, you know, Sulfurzyme is great at helping get rid of toxins in our body. Um, we can do some highlights on different, um, uh, enzymes and all the different ones that Young Living has. 
Um, and plus we got beauty school. We got a lot going on in February. So I chose every two months so that we can really target these. So coming up in March are the liver and gallbladder. Oh yeah, trust me. Um, if you have any anger or ever have had anger or ever thought about anger or anybody's ever been angry with you, the liver and gallbladder, right up your alley. Um, and <laughs> there, our liver is our largest detoxer, de detoxifier. And so it is a huge um, place that we need to work on. And that's the next one. And I followed the guidelines in this ultimate balance book. Um, of when seasonally she suggests detoxing each organ. So that's why I have the organs in the, in the way that I do. So I'm following her outline because, and she's, she's got some wisdom. This lady is full of wisdom. So, all right, you guys, thank you all so much for joining me. Hopefully you learned something and, and please feel free to reach out text or Facebook message, or I don't know, however, all the different ways you can reach me. All right, you guys. Thank you, Amy. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night.